Have I told you about the app that we're launching in May? It's an AI power self-discovery coach, and the feedback that we're getting has been crazy. Let me give you some. It literally felt like I was talking to a therapist. I loved it. Someone even shared an example of how they used it. So I told the app I don't like confrontation, and that's why I often don't know how to talk to others about how I feel because I don't like arguing. I loved how it literally walked me through how I can start a conversation without feeling like it was going to be a confrontation. Someone else, love, love, love it. Congrats again, this is going to be great. It launches in May and I couldn't be more hyped for you to use it. If you haven't already and you wanna be the first one to be able to use this, sign up for the app launch waitlist, which is in the show notes, or you can visit our website at plural.com. I'm chasing validation from the algorithm instead of creating content just to create content. You know what I mean? It's like creating art just to create art instead of for the validation of the museum that may one day, what well, maybe, how's my work? You know, that's, not, that's actually a great analogy. Like, I, I think... I think of social media platforms as the museum that may one day showcase my work. And I need to stop giving a fuck about them showcasing my work. Mi gente, dímelo, dímelo, what's good? Welcome to another episode of the Quintuera's podcast brought to you by Plural. You already know, it's your boy Pavel bringing you another very special episode. And in particular today... Well, it's supposed to be the typical Friday episode, but I am recording on a Saturday, uh, which I'll get into why I'm recording on a Saturday instead of a Friday. But if you're new here, you know that on Tuesdays, we share someone else's experience, someone from the community around their self-discovery journey. And then on Fridays, I share my experience, my journey. And the vibe for this is more so like, in, well, not like it is. It's an unscripted, unedited video, audio, journal entry. I am I'm someone who believes in journaling, the power of journaling, really just the power of getting our thoughts out and our ability to process it and the benefits that it has on us. So in order to normalize that behavior and that habit, I'm showing you the randomness of it, of my brain. So, yeah, I don't really know often where these episodes are going to go, as you probably heard last week. But um, this week, I do know, or at least today, I do know what I want to talk about because it's something that's been top of mind for me. And to bring this full circle, I'm actually going to, I need to do this consistently. Y'all should keep me accountable. Be like, yo, P, you didn't open up the Plural app this week to use it as your journaling. So I'm gonna do that today. I'm gonna do that today. Um, so I just clicked on, I just clicked on uh, one of the two options, which is when you're talking to the AI in the app and I clicked on start journaling and it welcomed me with a message that said, uh, sorry, I'm like scratching my eye, not scratching my eye, but you know that little, Oh, I feel so good. You know that little, you know that little piece of your eye, like in the corner, like I'm on my right eye on the on the left corner, like close to your nose. Why does that feel so good to? Oh my god, why does that feel so good to just like dig into? Oh. Anyway, all right. So it says, "Hey there, I'm Plural, your personal self discovery coach. I'm here to help you navigate through your thoughts and experiences. Before we jump into journaling, would you like to check in first? It can set the right tone for your journey today. You can tell me how you're feeling using the following options. So high energy, either pleasant or unpleasant, or low energy, either pleasant or unpleasant. What's your vibe today, Pavel? Question mark. So, hmm. Let me just type it out. Uh, actually, no. Instead of typing it out, I'm just going to hit the 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 button that allows me to transcribe my thoughts. So. I'm feeling high energy pleasant. And I think that is 
consistent with how I've been feeling this week. It's interesting, even when looking at the app, because I've been tracking it and journaling and checking it with myself on a daily basis. When comparing my my weekly summary or last week's vibe compared to this week's vibe, it's kind of like teetering right along that like is it anxiety or is it excitement you know because they're both high energy feelings but last week's high energy feeling felt very overwhelming and i mean from what i remember like at times uncontrolled like it went towards the doubt so it was unpleasant you know whereas this week, it feels like there's so many things going on that feels like I'm running all over the place, which I kind of was. So I have felt high energy and sometimes anxious, but I've been having a lot of like meetings and touch bases with people. Oh my God, I got to gotta sneeze one sec. You know, like... Yeah. Oh my God. I I just I heard someone in my head say bless you. I know somebody said it. Sure. Um, I don't know if I got allergies or I feel like I'm you know, it's weird too. Speaking of teetering between the two, like I feel like I still haven't figured out if I have allergies or I'm getting sick in between. Anyway, let me get back on track. So what the fuck was I just saying right now? Um, I was saying that... Oh, so yeah, I was busy this week. I was running around. And yes, everything felt... Not everything, but at times I did feel overwhelmed. I was like, oh my God, there's a lot of things happening right now. I feel like I'm falling behind this. Um, although these meetings have been productive, it I, I haven't been able to do X because I've been in meetings. You know what I mean? It's this idea of like what is productivity in my brain trying to almost rationalize some of the productive things that I actually was doing, right? But the overwhelming feeling, right? Because it's still, it was still kind of overwhelming, but the overwhelming feeling that I had this week compared to last week, which again is a very fine line, is more leaning towards excitement and eagerness. You know what I mean? And I've said this before, and I don't I don't know who said it, but like these high energy feelings feel the same in our bodies. But the difference between like anxiety and excitement is is simply how our brain processes it. Right. Cause like I we probably still get in that fight or flight with that overwhelming feeling. It's just like, yo, there's way too much going on. In my brain, I can process it as too much going on. You probably can't do this. You should probably put it off for now. Or it could be like a lot going on. Yo, this is going to be dope in a couple months. You know what I mean? And I think this week, my brain was able to shift towards the latter. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things that I'm excited about that. I haven't figured out, and maybe that's the exciting part, is my content. Like this week, damn, I recorded three podcast episodes this week. Like other people's stories, right? Damn, this will be four. This will be four, like my story, essentially. But it is one of the last few hour-long podcast episodes that I think I'm going to do for a while and I'm not I'm not I'm not like stepping away from the podcast I love the podcast on so many different levels this podcast the one you're listening to I get to process my thoughts I get to meet really dope people I get to share their stories etc cetera, etc cetera. but I gotta admit that creatively I've felt bored and it's it makes sense though like if i think about it like i launched this podcast in 2019 2020 like 
three, four years consistently putting out content every week, doing the same type of thing, yo, that that would that would bore anybody. And yes, I have made some changes, right? From from doing Zoom to I mean a big change was doing it in person, right? And that's been fun. That's been different. But and it oh oh I didn't even think about this, right? Like that is actually so I changed the setting and the location, but I haven't yet changed the format of the conversations. So it's like, okay, I changed that one thing. I like that change. What has remained constant still? And is there an opportunity to change that? Like, just because I changed one little variable within the whole equation doesn't mean it's going to solve the whole problem. You know, the problem being the boredom. And I want to be clear, like the boredom isn't because of the people I'm having the conversations with. Like, it's, it's it, I mean, it just just imagine you're doing a job, the same job for four years straight. You're, you're going to want to do something different, you know? And you could love where you work. You could love all these different things. You just want to try something different. Yo, this week, one of the one of the podcast episodes that I recorded, this is going to sound so fucking simple, but I like tried to record it from a different angle. And it felt so like I can't. All right. If I want to. All right. My, my brain is going towards liberating. But it feels dramatic. I just want I want to say cool. It felt so just like freeing, like this ability to to. To just like try something new. So for a visual. Every podcast episode, I try to angle the camera at a bit of a distance so that I can capture both of us sitting down. These days, typically it's at a coffee shop or <laughs> if the weather nice, we go into a park, right? But instead of that, I just, I just, instead of, all right, so instead of even including me in it, I only focus the camera on the person I was speaking to. It's kind of like DJ Vlad style. I think he's pretty famous for that style, but it's also like the, the, like the documentary style, like in a documentary, you're watching someone, you're only watching the person being interviewed, not both of the people which is different for podcasting, I guess, but in other mediums of, let's say, filmmaking, media, creativity, it, it's a, it is a format that people use. And, and why I wanted to do it doesn't really matter. It's just like such a simple thing got me excited to just like see what it looks like later, you know? And I just want to like try new things. And we sat down for the same hour long conversation and it was a dope conversation. It was fun. I was laughing. He was laughing, which isn't the goal, but it, you know, I'm just here trying to communicate the goodness of the conversation. But that little thing got me excited. I was like, oh, what other angles can I do? And then it made me think about, all right, what else has remained constant? In this formula of a podcast. And another thing that I've really wanted to change has been the length and the and the and the style of the conversation. So I don't think I want to do hour-long conversations anymore. I think I want to jump right into the into the meat of hey yo. Uh I want to jump right into the meat of um the conversation like like skip the buildup of and not that it's not important right like all right here's here's the thing i've had i kind of know how 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 these conversations are gonna go on average there is a similar story arc and what i'm really doing is getting the not the full context but as much context as i can the backstory but i'm really doing sort of this buildup up to, I don't know, let's just make this up, up to minute 35, where we really get into 
some some we get into i don't know things that i actually want to highlight versus some of those earlier years you know what i mean like i want to jump right into yo tell me about a time of your career where you doubted yourself or in life like when did you doubt yourself instead of getting the whole backstory around like childhood blah 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 and then talking about when you doubted yourself you know what i mean or yo when's the last time you celebrated yourself what's the last win that you wanted to celebrate again without sort of the build up of the context i kind of just want like want to jump right into it and i'm not saying in or or just focus on the family early stuff and have it right so i think i'm i think i want to do I'm going to focus on what I was doing previously around these 10 to 15, not previously, but I've done this maybe twice, two or three times where I would set myself up in coffee shops, in different cities, in different parts of cities and record 10 to 15 minute versions of these conversations. And each pop up would be around a different theme. Because this idea of, of self-discovery and professionalism and authenticity and business and careers, just navigating all of these worlds, trying to figure out who we are, trying to find ourselves. There's so many different topics within those that it would be really interesting if like each pop-up had a different theme, you know? So I don't know. Next week, we're talking about what's your relationship with money? And how has that impacted your confidence to uh, what were your expectations from your family growing up to the following week? It is, you know, and the following week is the expectation of family. The following week is like, how do you celebrate yourself? When's the last time you celebrate yourself to blah, blah, blah. And, the, and, and we just talk about these different themes in the different pop ups so that. Yeah, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that. I think it'll be easier also from like an editing standpoint. I also think from a time standpoint, like within an hour, I can get maybe four different stories, four different people. So I get to scale the number of stories that I share. I get to scale. I get to diversify a lot faster. And the types of people that I have featured as well. I'm really, I'm, I'm really, really excited for that. Something else that I've been struggling with content wise, speaking of being bored is I, I haven't been creating much content outside of the podcast. Like creating content used to be fun for me. I used to enjoy creating content and I think about the pandemic when I just grabbed my phone, grabbed some old school iPhone headphones, no, no interview, no script. I mean, not that I have a script now, right? But I'm just, I'm just saying, like, no lights, no fancy. It was no fancy camera. It was just my phone and some old headphones. It, it wasn't like, oh, what hook am I going to use, or how am I going to clip this, or. How am I going you know, to put the text overlays on that? It was no, it was no strategy. It was just me kind of like these Friday episodes. It was just me using social media as a journal, as a way for me to process my thoughts and in a way to let people know that they're not alone. You know what I mean? Like that has been, that has always been my most top performing content. But I think what's happened, not that I think, I know what has happened over time is that I have fallen victim, I don't want to, whatever, whatever, I'll just go with that, fallen victim to the algorithm, like, and trying to play within it. Like, oh, I mean, I, I'm bombarded with so much content on TikTok, on Instagram, just online in general around, like, these are the hooks you should be using. This is the format and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Fuck. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing this. Maybe I should do that. Right. There's that. And there's also chasing like 
virality almost. And I don't know if chasing is the right word, but there's definitely been a correlation between how many views my video gets and how I feel about myself as a creator, unfortunately. So if a video doesn't do well, I'm, I feel less capable of creating good videos and then I don't create additional videos. <laughs> Yo, it is it is wild to think about, right? Like this idea of of this this engagement metric, right? And I and you know, I know I know it's not just me because I listen to a lot of other content creators on podcasts and all these kind of things, and they and they say how it it social media has really shifted the way that they think about even creating content. And the other day, oh my God. All right. So this other thing that I've been struggling with is, and, 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 the, and this is a restraint that I just put on myself and no one told me this, right? But on the TikTok account, it's a business account that is on there, that is blue dot, right? So in my head, I have felt the need to only talk about a specific type of experience, right? And it, and it's it's a corporate experience, which I haven't been in corporate in so long. It's an experience that I I can resonate from previous experiences, but I can't resonate with it from where I am in my life right now, right? I can't talk about interviewing and what it feels like to to try to coach with during an interview. Like I haven't done that in that long. But I'm also trying to put myself in those shoes almost as if I'm a ghostwriter. <laughs> like because I'm telling myself, oh, that's what popped off before. That's what is relatable. Hence, you should probably do that again. But in re I mean maybe maybe it might pop off but in reality i have struggled with the acceptance that it was less about being a corporate and probably more just about the idea of being relatable and real about which is what's going on in your life period that people resonate with right like the the idea of starting a business the idea of starting a a, a side hustle being an entrepreneur being a business owner being a founder that is also relatable you know, that's just as relatable. And the struggles even that I'm experiencing now or or the or the successes, that can be just as relatable as some of the previous things that I was talking about, right? But I think that instead of creating from the lens of or at least the idea or the thought of why I originally started to create content is not where I'm at right now. And that's the biggest problem. I'm chasing validation from the algorithm instead of creating content just to create content. You know what I mean? It's like creating art just to create art instead of for the validation of the museum that may one day, what well, maybe, how's my work? You know, that's, not, that's actually a great analogy. Like, I, I think, I think of social media platforms as the museum that may one day showcase my work. And I need to stop giving a fuck about them showcasing my work but but it's it's tough right like okay here's the thing creatively i need to give less of a fuck about them showcasing my work on their walls because when i feel free and not constrained to what i think or or, or think or won't or won't will or won't perform well that is when i do my best work but at the same time my brain is like, yeah, that's cool and all. It may be great creatively, but 
you're a business or you run a business or you own a business. So visibility is important at the end of the day. So you kind of have to play that game, P, you know? It's a constant, like, tug of war between, like, yo, you should try to play the game versus, yes, but your way of playing the game. It's kind of like these two talking heads on each shoulder, you know what I mean? But the other one is like, yeah, you can play the game, but play your way because your way is like, it's kind of like by tricking yourself to not play the game, you're creating your best content which is then going to help you get the visibility, which is then playing the game. You know what I mean? It makes sense to me. It makes sense to me. It's not easy. It's not easy. And did I say this already? I don't know if I said this, but I actually launched a separate TikTok account fairly recently to try to... Oh, so this is what I was going to say. Yeah, I launched a separate TikTok account and and it's and it's so funny because I can probably talk about the same things that I'm well kind of I can probably talk about the same things that I'm talking about on this new TikTok account under biceps that I could under plural, but I feel pressure in my head to talk about like corporate related things on plural, whereas like on my quote unquote personal biceps TikTok account, I don't feel as constrained. And I feel so much freer to talk about all these other things. But it's it's wild to think about that no one is putting those constraints on my creativity besides myself. You know? Like, why why does my brain tell me that it is acceptable to talk about entrepreneurship on the biceps, but not acceptable to talk about those same things on plural? You know what I mean? Like, why is it okay for me to talk about my, um, whatever, like, uh, anxieties that I'm feeling on the biceps, but not to talk about the anxieties that I'm feeling on their plural. Like, I, I, I really do think that there's a through line and a way to do that in a way that addresses me redefining professionalism and you know this journey towards authenticity but for whatever way it's really like i i know i can justify it for whatever way it it, it my brain puts these like really hard constraints creatively around what i'm quote unquote allowed to post on the plural page that's exactly it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly it. My brain. And you know what? I think it's because I think it's because of the representation that I've seen historically from other quote unquote brand or business pages. Which is the reason I even launched the brand is to redefine professionalism. It's literally to redefine what the hell a brand page or a brand or all the like I'm trying to. I'm trying to redefine and disrupt all this shit. But it's been years of training around. It's been years of training around what it's supposed to look like. So, I mean, I guess this is part of the unlearning process, right? I mean, even the idea of like. What a brand video should look like. You know? I don't, yeah, it's 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 a lot to think about. Um, even the idea of of specific subjects that I should talk about, or not should talk about, right? Because should puts expectations, but more so allowed to talk about. Like, okay, I'm a CEO, I'm a founder. Talk about redefining professionalism. And I talk about authenticity and there's so many things that are going on in my life outside of just work, right? I mean, work is top of mind very often, right? Because again, whatever, I don't want to get into that, but I'm a human, right? And throughout this authenticity journey, there's so many other aspects of my life. 
that caused anxiety that then caused me to not be productive. I don't know. I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that I am at the point where I'm ready to test different things in my content strategy or our content strategy. And I don't know if it's going to be all in the plural. I don't know if it's, if, if this, if this separate TikTok page is, is going to help me. I don't know. Like, is there even a sep is, is it possible to even separate the two? Right? Like, yes, formally, technically create these sort of like separations, but I'm also so tied to the brand as the founder and the CEO. That like, does it really matter? You know what? All right. I just said all of that. And my phone has been transcribing every single word into the plural app. I'm just going to hit send. I'm going to see what it says. Probably needs a little bit of time to process all that because that was a lot of words. Let's see what it says. It says, wow, Pabell, it sounds like you've had a whirlwind of energy thoughts streaming through you this week. You capture such a vivid picture of navigating between anxiety and excitement, especially in the context of your work and creative process. It fa it's fascinating how you pin down that fine line between the two, recognizing that they both come, they both come from high energy plays, but lead you in different emotional directions. It seems like the shift from feeling overwhelmed to excited is a significant part of your reflection. You're embracing change, whether it's in the way you're conducting your podcast, engaging with new recording styles, or pondering over content creation strategies that resonate more authentically with you rather than being algorithm driven. I'm curious, you mentioned the contrast between how you feel when creating the content for your podcast versus creating content from social media platforms. What about the shift in recording angles made it feel freeing for you? Huh, that's interesting. That's an interesting question. How does exploring these new creative avenues align with how you see your growth both personally and as a creator? Your exploration into different facets of the of creativity, experimenting with podcast formats, and questioning the algorithm's influence on your content and self-perception offers so much to unpack. It's like you're on the cusp of redefining your creativity. Oh, it, it's like you're on the cusp of redefining your creative identity. How does that prospect make you feel given your vividly detailed journey? Okay. Well, I just hit record on the app again. And I'm going to be honest, all right, I, obviously that wasn't like paired. I didn't know how it was going to respond. I didn't know how the app was going to respond. And one thing I actually need to tweak is that I think it's asking too many questions. Like, so some feedback I've gotten is like, all right, which question should I answer first? It's like you asked, I think it asked like three questions, but the last question was really good. It said, I'm on the cusp of a create of redefining my creative identity. And how does that make me feel? You know what? It makes me. It makes me feel a little bit nervous. And I'll tell you why. So. I mean, even I mean. You know, you know what? Speaking of feeling free, these Friday slash Saturday episodes have been so free. I kind of want, I mean, I already, I already journal every day. I kind of want to record one of these every day and maybe I won't publish them every day. Maybe I'll just listen to them. I'm sorry. Maybe I'll just like, it's just a way to keep me accountable. Maybe I'll post them every day. I don't know, but 
it is freeing just getting your thoughts out, especially verbally, like speaking it out loud. It's, it's, it's powerful. But this has been freeing. And I mean, going into making some of this content, like you have an idea and a vision of what feeling and takeaway you want the audience to have. And it's been so gratifying hearing that people are getting the exact feeling that you want to put out there. Somebody said, um, somebody said it feels like, <laughs> somebody says uh, on, on, on last episode that I actually took down, well, not deleted it, but made it private, put in the drafts. I'll talk about it maybe next week. Why? Because that, that's an interesting conversation as well. But somebody said, yeah, it kind of sounds like during the episode, you're nervous because, damn, what did she say? She kind of said, like, it sounds like you're nervous, but um, it was, oh, she said, like, it sounds like you're nervous because you, and it sounded like you were, like, literally processing it, like, in real time. And I was like, yeah because I am processing it in real time. <laughs> I am processing it in real time. I was like, I'm glad that comes across. And she said it was like refreshing how genuine and authentic that it felt, right? And that's what I want. I want people to know that our brains, your brain is messy. It's all over the place. Sometimes it feels like it doesn't make sense, but at the end of it, you'll probably come out with some really interesting insights about yourself and things that you want to continue thinking about, right? And I've said this before, right? But like my life isn't, yeah, and sorry, I'm so for all of that, like if, if I, I know how powerful it, it is and if I can normalize that behavior, that habit, that process for someone else by giving you a glimpse into my brain and being vulnerable and you know some people say brave enough to do that fuck it that said i'm not always going to talk about these quote unquote traditional work related stuff i intentionally say that this is a self discovery journey it's not a career discovery journey it's not a work discovery journey it's a self discovery journey I often use work, business, and career in these community-based experiences or the Tuesday episodes as a way to just get people to open up about their mental health and self-discovery journey. It, it's just an entry point. But business and career is not the theme of the show. I do fear, but not much, ironically, being misunderstood, let's say canceled or, you know, all these sort of things. And that is that that is what we talk about on the show. That is the that is the that is the point of resistance that I often talk about when it comes to authenticity. And this isn't, this will be an interesting research study on how far people are willing to accept or how far, yeah, how far people are willing to accept authenticity. How far am I able to push the boundaries on what a quote unquote, a CEO is allowed to talk about publicly? And will people still support him or the products or et cetera? I don't know. As I'm saying this, it sounds like I'm about to say some crazy shit. I'm not. I, I don't have anything crazy to say, but I don't even know where I was going with this. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So on the cusp of, of, of redefining my creative identity. So with that, it's interesting also 
to hear how many people enjoy these episodes versus the Tuesday episodes. And as I'm thinking about like my creative identity, I'm like, are, are like, is, is this going to be bigger than the Tuesday episodes? I don't know. I want to continue doing both, but I don't know. It's just like, okay, here's the thing. And maybe this is where I end. Cause I feel like I've been talking for a while. I don't know how long I've been talking, but it feels like it. Here's the thing. I have the power. I control the narrative, the story, the version of myself that I want to put out there. I think that's the other part about authenticity, right? So in redefining my creative identity, I get to decide what that is just like you you get to decide what your creative identity is i often talk to so many people who want to start creating content and and you know you probably struggle with a lot of the same things that i do but the biggest thing or the self-doubt that comes into mind is like I don't have enough clout or experience in that specific industry. Like, I don't know if I should be creating content in that industry. You get to redefine your creative identity, your professional identity, whatever. Like, in a few weeks, I may be known as the AI, the AI guy. <laughs> Who knows? But I think I think there's this interesting. Here's the, okay, here's the other thing. And maybe maybe this is where I follow up for next week, but as much as you also try to create or redefine your own creative identity, there is also intention, which is like what you can control, and there is perception which you may be able to shift but can't fully control. And how much of that do you give a fuck about? It kind of goes back to this, like, this, this creating for the art versus chasing the validation of the algorithm. You know what I mean? And I'm at the point where I don't want to chase the validation of the algorithm and I just want to create dope shit. I just want to create art. Can I use that same analogy when it comes to my authenticity? I think so. But it will be interesting as I continue to do these journal entries. Because I'm trying to keep it real with y'all. Again, for the goal of normalizing. Processing our thoughts. All right. I'm going to click send. On that as well. On the app. And let me see what it says. Hearing you articulate these reflections in a genuinely insightful, I'm sorry, is genuinely insightful. I can't read. Um, it's clear you're navigating a lot of complex feelings around your creativity and public vulnerability. You're balancing this curiosity and enthusiasm for exploring new forms of expression with a sensible, with a sensible apprehension about how it may be received. That genuine concern about perception versus intention is inherently relatable. The way you're embracing the raw, unfiltered side of content creation, letting people see the process rather than just the polished end product is courageous. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And that's exactly what I am trying to do. It humanizes the experience, not just for you, but for your audience as well. Yo, legit, that's that's what people told me. All right. Um, the AI went on to say, it's about breaking down the facade that everything is seamlessly perfect and acknowledging the messiness of creativity and thought. You mentioned feeling nervous about redefining your creativity and the potential pushback or misunderstanding from the public. Reflecting on this, how does challenging these norms and expectations fuel your drive? Damn, this question is good. Fuel how does it fuel your drive to continue on this path? Does it feel liberating despite the nervousness to possibly redefine what it means to be a creator in your space? God damn, that was a good question. Yo, this app is this app is amazing. All right. I could I could continue journaling and I probably will like just offline. All right. All right. 
my the story that i'm telling myself in my brain is that y'all don't want to hear this shit and that I'm, i've just been talking for too long i'm just gonna end the chat here and maybe i'll pick up on this conversation later for now i'm gonna end the chat and i'm gonna look at what the chat snapshot is it's essentially gonna be like a summary of the chat conversation that i just had but i also want to know what emotional word it picks up exhilarated it says okay so the summary so in summary the feeling that i have right now according to to, to the to the plural app says exhilarated so a feeling of excitement happiness or elation often experienced during moments of high energy and positive outlook reflecting an optimistic and enthusiast enthusiastic state i'm going to save that journal entry and i'm going to set it as the current mood that was another episode y'all listen if you have any thoughts on this podcast as a whole on the friday slash saturday episodes any thoughts concerns feedback like i'm a big boy i can take it if you listen to last week's episode and you were like listen that was too much i'm gonna need a, <laughs> I need a warning next time i get it i want your feedback let me know what you think email me at hola at plural.com that is h-o-l-a at p-l-u-r-a-w-l.com see you next time